Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. So I am here in my new digs and unpacking here with my fiance. Yes, I am engaged. Excited by this. She is off at work, so I'm going to start prepping dinner. Why don't, you, why don't you stay and have some with us? Doing a stir fry. So let's start with dessert first. Dessert normally takes the longest amount of time, so that's where we're going to do it. So in a container I have half cup sugar, three tablespoons unsweetened cocoa powder, quarter cup of cornstarch, quarter teaspoon salt, and I added one teaspoon of espresso powder. Give a little zing. Mix the dry ingredients together. I have a small whisk, it's what I used. You can use a fork. I think the whisk does a better job making it uniform. Mix it all together and it looks like this. It sort of looks like the pudding mix you get from the store. It's basically what you just made. Ready to go into business for yourself. That looks good. All we need now is the dairy product. I use two and three quarter cups of light cream and two tablespoons of butter. You can use half and half, you can use milk. Don't use fat free. You want the fat in there to integrate everything together. Whisk the dry ingredients into the warm milk. Keep heating on medium, medium high. Keep stirring. If you stop for more than a few seconds, it's going to burn, it's going to stick to the bottom, and that is not tasty starting to look really good, sort of like a really rich chocolate milk or hot chocolate. Keep stirring. Don't stop. It makes a difference. Trust me, boys of experience. Let it come to a gentle boil and let it boil for about a minute. This is going to cause the cornstarch to thicken. Keep stirring. The only reason I stopped is so that I could take this photograph. Once this Boil for about a minute, remove from the heat, and then add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix that in thoroughly, and you're set to go. I went and poured it into some ramekins. I have two large ones for dinner, two small ones for lunch the next day. For me, it works. Now, you may be wondering what the recipe is. Let me give it to you right here. Dessert is now made, so now it's time to clean up from that, prep the veggies, and maybe lick the bowl. I mean, let's be honest, if you're making chocolate pudding from scratch, the best part is licking the bowl. So with our stir fry, we're going to do sweet red pepper, green asparagus, and chicken. We're going to cut the sweet red pepper just in the outside of the indents. This way we can leave the seeds behind and have the wonderful flesh of the sweet red pepper clean and off to the side. We're going to go around to all the indents and get the flesh from it. You can either discard the seeds or you can save them, plant them next year in your garden. Right now, just get them out of here so we can keep our board clean. We're going to cut the peppers into strips about the same width as the asparagus. If it's thin asparagus, cut them thin. If it's a little thicker, cut them thicker. Keep in mind, we eat first with our eyes. The red and green of the sweet red pepper and the asparagus, wonderful combination. Cut them into bite size, set them aside until we need them. Take the asparagus, wash it, Set it out here on your cutting board. This is thin asparagus, so we do not need to take our vegetable peeler to get the skin off and release the wonderful tender inner flesh. It will come out very easily. We're going to take the bottom quarter, roughly, cut that off and discard. If you're making a vegetable stock, you can throw it into there, but we don't need it for this dish. Get it out of here. Once we do this, we're going to cut the asparagus into bite-sized pieces. I could have gone a little smaller. I was afraid it would get too small and turn into mush inside the stir-fry. 
put into another bowl, set aside until needed. The chicken breast. We are going to butterfly them. So by that, we're going to take a chicken breast, cut almost in half, and then we're going to open it on up like butterfly wings. Be careful with it so you don't slice your hand open. And once you have this, set it aside, do it to both breasts. So now that we have butterfly the chicken breasts, we're going to roll them thin so that they cook very quickly in the stir fry. Now you can use a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, take a piece of plastic wrap or a piece of foil, put it on top of the breast and use a wine bottle. So just like I said, I didn't have my rolling pin handy. It was still packed away. So I used a wine bottle. Worked well. Remember, we're trying to make it thinner, not turn it to mush. We rolled it out, then I cut it into thin strips. Thin strips will cook fast. Everything about stir fry is fast cooking. Once I had this done, I placed it into a food safe container. I added a little teriyaki sauce to flavor the chicken. Cover it, put on the bottom shelf of the refrigerator. Always put raw meats on the bottom shelf. Never, never, ever on top. I grabbed two cloves of garlic, peeled them, and then I sliced them into thin sections. And these are going to crisp in wonderfully as they cook with the chicken. Adds wonderful aromatics as well as flavor. Set them aside, but not too far because we're about to begin. Get your rice going if you haven't already done it. I am using jasmine rice, which is a little sticky when fully cooked. This means that it's perfect for using with chopsticks. Holds together better. And now through the magic of video, the rice is halfway done. Woohoo! So it's time to start pulling the chicken out of the refrigerator. Let it start to warm a little. As it's doing that, we're going to crack two eggs into a small bowl. Have this ready. Whisk the eggs a little bit. Keep in mind, we're not using any of these stir fry sauces from the store. Little teriyaki, little soy, and it's all you need. Place your wok on or high-sided frying pan on the burner. Use medium-high heat. When hot, place a few tablespoons of olive oil in the pan. You can use peanut oil, canola oil. Add the chicken and garlic to the hot oil. Use a spatula to keep turning the chicken. This will help prevent the chicken from sticking and also give that wonderful GBD factor. Golden brown and delicious. Same thing happens with the garlic. After a few minutes, add the sweet red pepper. Sweet red pepper will take a little bit longer to cook than the asparagus. Once the vegetable is softened a little, you can then add the asparagus and mix that on in. Yes, I am using an electric range instead of a gas range. Next place. As the color changes from dull to bright green, you know that it's done. So I'm using a little soy sauce to flavor and stain the dish. It adds a wonderful aromatic and salty flavor. I added a little fresh black pepper, but no salt. It all came with the soy sauce. Whisk the eggs with a fork and then add to the center of the wok with all the veggies and meat. This is going to add flavor as well as help thicken the dish gives that nice Asian flavor and to it all, thickens it all, it's perfect. Rice is done, let's start plating. Place a serving of the rice on your plate. Again, the stickiness of the jasmine rice makes it ideal for using chopsticks. If you use a Latin rice, you may not have the same effect. Place a serving of the chicken and veg on top of the rice. I wish that we had smell o video because the aroma is amazing. 
Then I added a little bit of fresh lime juice to the chicken. This adds a wonderful citrus quality to it. And yeah, I know the picture is a little blurry. Squeezing one hand, taking a picture with the other, it happens. And here we go. Use chopsticks to enjoy the meal. I even got my fiance to, to use chopsticks. She did well. And we're ready to sit down and eat. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready for dinner. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, here's cooking with you.